I wish we had smell -o vision because the food smells so good. We have Evan and we have Brandon, and they are with Curbside Mexican. Welcome to the show. How are you guys? Doing well. Pretty Thank good, you. Donna. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. us. Good. So you're both foodies. Yeah. You've been friends for a long time. Yeah. But who owned a restaurant first? Uh, I was the first one. Okay. I started uh, while I, when I was 21 years old with a, a Greek restaurant called Avli. I worked for the original owners. They had an original place in Queens, and then we opened one in West Hempstead. Lovely. Mm -hmm. And then were you dining there, or were you no, friends so, before that? So okay. we have another partner. My brother okay. was his delivery boy. Okay. Uh, so that's how they met. They hit it off. They were close in age, and they've been friends for many years now. Um, and then, I mean, yeah, the, the idea of curbside came up organically. I always worked in the restaurant industry, so they kind of added me in there. And, you know, we have another partner as well who helps us with all our business decisions. So we have a great team behind us, which is excellent. It's a must-have for sure. Um, but yeah, it's been quite a journey. We're almost open five years now. Congratulations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As an entrepreneur, especially a restaurateur, right? What is one common mistake that people make when they're trying to open up a restaurant? Like maybe they're good at, you know, making something at home and they're like, oh, my recipe for this is so good, I can open up a restaurant, right? Yes. right? Well, what is a common mistake that people I think, are making? Personally, I think the mix between food and business, like you could be great a great chef, know everything about food, but the business aspect weighs heavy because you are opening up a business. Some people don't lean on the business aspect as much as the food aspect, and something we're working on right now is marketing. Okay. You know, phones, internet, everything, yeah. social media is so popular nowadays. And it always changes, too. That's something that you have to tap into that, you know, Part of the business aspect more than the food aspect. To help it thrive. Yeah. Right. Right. You can have the best product, but if nobody knows, they're not going to come to you. They're right. going right. to go with somebody that's got like a bigger squawker box. Of course. Right. And like having a passion is, is excellent. You need that. And mm -hmm. as being a business owner, you know, if you're not passionate about it, you're going to get burnt out because you need to dedicate as much time as required. But you need to know the business end too because, you know, you can get buried otherwise. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was a restaurateur, he and his brother. They owned uh, Campana's Bar and Grill in mm -hmm. St. Louis, Missouri, and it was a lot, you know, so um, Uncle Emil ran the bar, and my grandfather was the chef, he did the food, but then you're right, well, who's running the business? Mm -hmm. You got one person, to, right. so you need a lot of hands, yeah. for sure. right? So I'm excited because, like I said, it smells incredible. Uh, mm -hmm. So curbside Mexican, what are some of the dishes that are on your menu? So we, I like to describe ourselves as a American-Mexican fusion. Okay. So it's not necessarily authentic stuff. We do have some authentic items like our birria tacos, which are out of this world, and our empanadas. We have chicken, pork, ground beef, the usuals, but we have a nice little twist where we have dessert ones. Rainbow cookie empanadas, Whoa. Oreo empanadas, Whoa. red velvet empanadas, <laughs> stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. For a little sweet tooth, a little right. something, something. It's almost like a pie at that point, right? It's almost Definitely like we a... do that too. Actually, you we do? have apple pie, blueberry pie, cherry pie. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So you know, we have a lot of fun with it. Um, so we kind of built out our menu to give us that option of going a little crazier with the Tex-Mex, and then also staying true to the Mexican cuisine and trying to get, you know, stuff with more vegetables, more seasoning, and mm -hmm. more heart behind it. Is it easier when you own more than one location because you can get more of a discount on your fresh ingredients? Uh, or is it about this? It doesn't matter. Give, give or take. Um, nowadays, it's a little bit more different. You know what I'm saying? The economy is a little tougher right now. But uh, it's easier in the aspect that you have a pre-built model okay. from the original one. Yeah. The second one is just, I wouldn't say easier by any means, but... You kind of know what you're doing you instead it out. of the first yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, this is a n nobody wants this. We're taking it off the yeah. menu. The yeah. first, the first right. day we opened in right. curbside one, right. it was uh, <laughs> it was a free for all. It was all yeah. four of all four of us, pretty much just trying to figure out what's going on. We had I think an hour and a half wait, and we weren't that busy in hindsight. You know, wow. it was just our systems weren't polished. So okay. then opening mm -hmm. location two with the systems in place already, you know, it went much smoother. Mm -hmm. You do and the I lettuce, imagine. you do the cheese. Exactly, you know? yeah. What is a good recipe? I was joking around, but when I grew up, um, I think the first taco I ever had, I might have been like 10 or 11 years old, and it was simply just the shell that you got. You make the meat at mm -hmm. home with the seasonings, mm -hmm. and then it was like, Velve I would put my Velveeta cheese on mm -hmm. the bottom of the taco shell so it melt, you know, but sometimes people here, they put the cheese on top of the taco. Like, you know, what is it? Like, how do you, or do you just, Go your own way sometimes. Well, I think presentation is a big part of, especially our food with the colors and the, you know, the way 
you take a bite of the taco and it should have every ingredient in there, oh. you know? One instead bite of, wonder. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Instead of getting a little meat in one side and the roughage on the other side or something like that, it's got to be layered nicely. But we do have a few different tacos with a few different items, and you can build your own as well. Very nice. And you only have a catering business too, correct? Yeah, so we do a ton of like catering for parties, you know, any sort of like to customers, but we also do a lot to businesses as well. We do a lot of offices. Um, we work with a lot of different uh, doctors and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, we do build your own tacos. It's a nice widespread, um, you know, it's good. It's like a little taco bar you can take with you at your party. Sounds like fun. Yeah. You know, coast to coast, there's so many different tastes and preferences. And I love the fact that you said, you know what, we're going to blend a little of this, a mm -hmm. little of that. Mm -hmm. I think that most restaurants now in America, they're, they're trying to do that because they've got a sophisticated palate mm -hmm. and they want to appeal to the most amount of people. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think it's, uh, especially the restaurant small business has become very niche Instead of like opening up a diner that has anything and everything yeah. under the sun, people have honed in on the stuff they really love and know and build a menu off of that. I had ramen yesterday and I thought, wow, this is really good. Mm -hmm. It's like a full meal. Mm -hmm. Of course. You know, right? mm -hmm. We do you, that as well. You do? We have ramen, yeah. You do? It's on our yeah. menu, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, that was a special that kind of stuck around. People loved it so much, so. Yeah. yeah. I'm into this. Yeah. Thank you. And what did you bring our crew to eat today? Outside, we got a whole taco bar, like I just said for you guys. Right cool. here, yes. we have a birria crunch wrap. So it's our slow cooked beef, guacamole, pico de gallo, mozzarella, onion, cilantro. Uh, we have the three dessert empanadas that Evan mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And then we have a Maui Wowie crunch wrap, which is steak, shrimp. It's like a surf and turf. Maui Wowie. It's mm -hmm. great, yeah. Maui Wowie. Yeah. Yeah. The names I are like fun it. too. We yeah. have fun with that as well. Well, yeah. I can tell you have a great friendship, so continued success to both of you Thank and, you, and your Thank whole you so entire much. team. Thank it's you. really Thank admirable. You. Well, if you are looking to open up your own restaurant, you could reach out to Brandon and Evan because they told me that you could and they Absolutely. will help you. Thanks for watching.